This is the Oregon Coast Adventure Journal, an ongoing solo exploration of the Oregon coast. I picked up the trail again just past Flores Lake and headed south, confident of reaching Blacklock Point by sunset. At one point during the night, the side of the tent lit up faintly for a second, and my heart skipped a beat. Then it happened again, and then again. It turned out to be the signal light from the Cape Blanco lighthouse, not some crazed lunatic come to murder me. Morning came and I walked out to the point to look around and shake off the rust. I was determined to stay rooted in the present and take on each challenge as it came up. Walking the coast is like balancing on a ribbon suspended between two worlds. It is ever-changing. Distances are warped, and space is curved. The mouth of the Sixes River came into view, I could see a family of gray seals lounging on the tidal flats. I had timed the crossing for low tide, but there was more water in the Sixes than I had anticipated. So I continued upriver toward the Hughes house, hoping to find a shallow place to cross. A young fox darted in and out between piles of driftwood, scavenging for breakfast. I saw it long before it saw me, and it got quite close before noticing me. When it finally saw me, it darted away, but stopped a couple times poking its head over driftwood logs, looking back to see if I was still there. On the far shore of the Sixes was a tangle of blackberry and tall grass. I fought my way through it, to a path which led me back out to the mouth. I crossed the bay on the beach in the shadow of the Cape Blanco lighthouse and climbed the bluff on the other side, gaining the westernmost point in the continental U.S. The wind was blowing consistently now, 25 to 30 miles per hour. My head was fuzzy with the white noise of the surf. At the Cape Blanco campground, I stopped for the first time to eat a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and thought about my next move, crossing the Elk River. Again, the river crossing proved more difficult than anticipated. Small landslides and erosion had changed the course of the elk, creating a deep channel along the north shore of the river. 
I had made good time and arrived ahead of the tide. My only choice was to wait it out and hope the outgoing tide would lower the river enough to cross. I left my pack and scouted ahead. After about two hours, I was able to make my move. On the other side, I stopped briefly to consider where I had been and the rest of the day. Port Orford was a hop and a skip away, and if the wind hadn't been so brutal, I could have made camp right there on the high dune between the elk and the crashing surf. The wind, however, forced my hand, and I had to keep going, knowing tomorrow would be an easier day. I only had to make it through the night. When I finally reached the tree, I found the trunk half submerged in the sand and the towering root ball only barely protected me from the now 40-plus sustained winds. I sat down to eat a Ziploc bag full of rice, beans, and sausage. One of the best meals I've ever eaten, sand and all. I sat and watched the wind spin drift the waves and played the waiting game. I tried to imagine the first tribes 20,000 years ago, inching their way down the coast, leaving footprints in soft sand, tentative steps into an unknown world. Judging from the piles of rotting kelp nearby, I knew the tide could reach me, and there was a real possibility high tide would drown my camp. Still, I waited, debating whether or not to sleep in anticipation of the tide. Just after sunset, the wind subsided. Then. In the semi-darkness, the unmistakable white foamy lip of a wave crested the edge of the beach and pooled just to my right on the windward side of the log. According to my chart, high tide was just two hours away and I had no choice. I had to continue moving down the beach. The next morning proved windy again. Because of my dark push down the beach the night before, it had been a leisurely morning. I drank the last cold sips of my coffee and took some photos and wandered around the beach looking for agates. I walked to where the Pacific reclaimed the shoreline, to the end of the sand where the surf breaks on rocks, and waited with ghosts.